Hey everyone, I want to welcome you as you join us today. We're currently in a message series entitled Habits and, and I hope you've been enjoying this series. But before we jump in today, I just want to take a moment to share some things that the Lord has laid upon my heart. You see, at Expansion Church, we celebrate the wins and I want you to know that as a church, we are right now winning in every way imaginable. If you aren't aware, Expansion Church is a church plan scheduled to launch on September 13th of this year, right here in the beautiful city of Fort Pierce. And though we haven't had a single in-person corporate service or gathering, we've already seen God do some pretty amazing things. You see, even in the midst of COVID-19, we've seen God add people to our launch team. We found ways to stay connected virtually. In fact, I know that the devil is upset with us because he thought COVID-19 would be the end of us only to find out that through connecting online, our relationships as a church and as a team have only gotten stronger. While many churches across our nation have experienced a sharp decline in their giving, we've seen our giving go up as a church. This is not at all to brag, but to point out the faithfulness of our God. At Expansion, we recognize that the church isn't at all a building that we walk into on a Sunday morning, but that it's the people that make up the church. Those of you that are a part of Expansion Nation, whether here locally or far and wide, I want to encourage you to continue giving to this awesome move of God called Expansion Church. Together, we will see God do more than we could dream, think, or imagine. Click to give now. Let's have church. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to Expansion Sundays. We're so glad you're here. My name is Peter and I get the awesome opportunity to serve at Expansion Church. Expansion Church is a place where you can belong. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've been through. This is a place where you can call home. If you're new here, we're so glad you've joined us. Just so you know, we are a church plant scheduled to launch September 13th of this year in the beautiful city of Fort Pierce, Florida. We will be meeting at Fort Pierce Central High School's auditorium each and every Sunday from launch day on, and we'd love for you to join us. If you'd like to know more about how you can join the movement and make an impact in Fort Pierce and beyond, starting now, simply fill out the connect card right there in the comment section below and someone from our team will be in touch with you. As we prepare our hearts to give, we would like to thank you in advance for giving so generously to build God's kingdom. Those of you that currently give and serve at Expansion Church, you're helping to make a huge difference in and around our region. I wanna pray for you and the impact our giving together will have to spread the love of Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the giving that we're about to receive from in and around this region. I know we need it, and we're looking forward to it, how you're going to impact the region with this time. It's in Jesus' name, amen. Sit tight. Pastor Rock has prepared a great message for us entitled Habits. Small disciplines, big results. Let's check it out. I want to start today's message by asking you to think about your last normal day. You might be saying to yourself right now, I haven't had a normal day since quarantine began. But I want you to try your best. What was your last normal day like? If you work, what did you do at the beginning of that work day? Whatever you did on the last normal day, I want you to stop and I want you to think about that for a moment. Here's what I know. The odds are very, very high that what you did on that day was very similar to what you did on the normal day before that. In other words, if your alarm woke you up that day, you probably were awakened by the alarm the day before. Or if you just normally get up with no alarm, you probably got up the day before with no alarm. 
You probably went to the bathroom sometime early that morning as you do every single morning. Followed maybe by checking social media, maybe checking some emails, maybe reading your Bible, maybe doing a little workout. Perhaps you made yourself some coffee, maybe some breakfast. You probably took a shower, which is good. Keep doing that, or you may not be employed for long. You probably got to work a similar way as you did the day before. You probably worked with the same people and did very similar things all day long to what you did the previous day. You probably got home the same way. If you drove, what's very scary is that you probably didn't even remember to drive home. Like you just kind of automatically got home. You probably had a normal evening routine. Maybe you worked out in the evening or, or maybe you did some, uh, bought some fast food. Uh, maybe, maybe you cooked a meal at home. Then you griped at everybody who didn't help cook the meal because they didn't clean up the dishes afterwards and they didn't say thank you. And you have every right to do that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And my wife said, amen. You might have a normal routine with your kids. You put three kids in the bathtub, one always escapes. You always find that one kid, you throw them back in the bathtub. Once the kids are done, you have your evening routine. After getting kids in the bed, it might be 8 p.m., then that signals the very beginning of your Netflix binge. It could be that you spend prayer time or you journal. At the end of the day, maybe you leaned over to your spouse and you made a move, only to get rejected. Again, you went to bed mad. Isn't it funny how when we get mad at our spouse, how we can balance on the edge of the bed all night without falling off? How do we do that? Look. I don't know what your day, is, your day was like, your last normal day was like, I don't know. But chances are it was pretty similar to the day before. In fact, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Most of what you normally do isn't a result of conscious choices, but of daily habits. Let, let me repeat that. Much of what you do every single day is not a result of a decision that you make, but of a habit that you already have in your life. In fact, Duke University did a study in 2006 and what they found was this. They found that 40% of the actions that you take in any given day, that they're not the result of decisions, but rather they're the result of everyday habits that you put into place. That's why if you wanna change where you're going in life, you wanna change who you're becoming in life. We have to change our habits. If you were with us last week, we talked about three reasons why most people fail in the area of habits. We said that many people fail because they refuse to put the systems in place in life necessary to help them reach their goals. We said that you don't rise to the level of your goals, but that you fall to the level of your system. Secondly, we said that many people fail because they conclude that small decisions don't really matter all that much. Not understanding that your life is the sum total of all your decisions, good and bad. Lastly, we concluded with the recognition that many of us fail because we have an unhealthy identity. Many of us wrongly link our identity to our behavior when it should be linked to our creator. I'm gonna say that again. We wrongly link our identity to our behavior when it should be linked to our creator. This week, I wanna take a look at the life of Daniel. If you grew up in the church, maybe you remember hearing about Daniel in Sunday school. Maybe you're like me and you didn't grow up in the church. And when you hear me say Daniel, you're like, Daniel, Daniel. Danny Glover? Nope, that's not quite who I'm talking about. Most people know Daniel from the story of Daniel and the lion's den. This is not a Netflix series, but a story in your Bible, just in case you're wondering. Daniel is most known for being locked in a lion's den and not being eaten by the lions. That's proof that the Lord was with him, big time. I wouldn't have made it out. I'd be dead. You'd be dead. You've got to admit, the fact that he's not dead is pretty impressive. But what's also really impressive in Daniel's life is the fact that among 120 of the top leaders in his nation, Daniel stood out as having exceptional quality. This would be the equivalent of making Times Magazine, People of the Year edition. I'm just saying. Here's what scripture says in Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Daniel was preferred above all the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm why in the world did Daniel stand out what was it that made him who he was 
He might have had a spirit of excellence, maybe great leadership gifts, maybe he was good relationally. We don't know exactly what it was, but there was something in the life of Daniel that caused him to stand out amongst 120 of the top people around, helping, helping him to get on the cover of Time Magazine. Before we answer the question of what made him stand out, I wanna give you more context. Daniel became popular with the king and was on his way to being promoted. There were a lot of people that didn't like him. Let me just pause here and say this. Anytime you rise in success, there are gonna be people that don't like you, period. So Daniel's enemies decided to take him down. They looked for any kind of weakness, any kind of flaw in his character, any kind of defect, so they could trip him up. But they had a problem finding it. Scripture says in Daniel chapter six, verse four, then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or to condemn him. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. You see, Daniel was trustworthy. He wasn't corrupt, he wasn't negligent. So they looked to find a way to trip him up. They couldn't find any flaws or weaknesses, so they figured the only way they could trip him up is to do something about his God. This guy is so into his God that that's the only chance we have of getting them to make some kind of mistake. So they tricked the king into issuing a decree that if anyone prays to anyone except the king in the next 30 days, that that person would be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel chapter six, verse 10 says this. When Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God. He gave thanks to God just as he, had, as he had done before. What did Daniel do? Not once a day, not twice a day, but three times a day. Not when it was convenient, not when it was easy, but every single day he stopped, he sought God, he listened for the voice of God, he brought his burdens before God, he petitioned God, he let God direct his steps three times a day as he had done before. I would argue the thing that made Daniel stand out among everyone else was his system. This got him on the front page of the magazine, noticed by everyone. It was one very small habit that over time shaped his identity and gave him confidence to be who God created him to be. He prioritized his life around intimate time with his heavenly father. What did Daniel do? He lived a habit, a system. Fellowship, intimacy, time with God, one small discipline. What I would say to you is this, Never underestimate how our God can start something big through one small habit. Never underestimate what God might do, something special, something powerful, something that impacts a lot of people that starts with one single small act of obedience. Our God loves to take small acts of faithfulness and do something special through those things. Years ago, my wife and I determined that to be close to God, we needed to have some disciplines in our life. In other words, nobody just stumbles into intimacy with God. Like, oh man, I was just sitting and what do you know, I got close to God. No, nobody accidentally becomes full of spiritual strength, power and faith. And so years ago, we started the discipline of tithing. Very simple, one discipline. Anytime God blessed me, blessed us, we chose in that moment to honor him and to put him first. It's a constant, consistent reminder that he's our source, our provider. And so we worship him through the time. And as a result, God has blessed our life immensely. Another discipline my wife and I have is that our family goes to church. It's just what we do. We don't miss. There has never been a weekend in my house where anyone in my house, kids included, have said, are we going to church this weekend? Hmm, I don't know. No, that ain't how we roll. The last time we went on vacation, we took the kids to New York City. Sunday night, because that's just how cool New Yorkers do it. Guess where we're sitting? We're sitting in church because that's what we do. We are people of God and God's church is a priority to us. Another discipline we have in our house is we pray over our kids every single night. Yes, every single night. My kids will tell you they don't remember a night where mommy and or daddy did not pray over them before they went to sleep. We pray for God's protection over their life. 
We pray that God would help them to grow into a man of God or a woman of God. Just as a side note, when was the last time you prayed over your kids? This might be a discipline, a habit that you need to put in place in your life. If you were with us last week, we said let's start a little differently than when we normally would in this area of habits. Instead of starting with the do, what do I want to do? Let's start with the who. Before we ask, what do I want to do? We need to ask, who does God want me to be? Who am I supposed to be? A godly parent, a bold witness, a person who's healthy, a chain breaker breaking generations of obesity in my family. Who do I want to be? Now, we add another piece of application to this this week. And here is your one assignment. Based upon who you want to become, what one habit do you need to start? In other words, based upon who God is calling you to be, what is the one small discipline that will move you in that direction? I want to tell you right now, it's better if this one thing is not big, that, that it's not big. You want to start with something small. It may be for you that you're not going to hit the snooze button ever again. Listen to me. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. It could be something incredibly small. You might say Bible before Instagram. Before I pull social media up, in the morning I'm gonna do my U version plan for the day or I'm gonna pray with my kids before they go to bed at night. But just one small, simple prayer. What do you do based on who do you wanna become? You may say, well, I wanna be the person that cares about others. So for you, maybe it's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write one note a day to express my gratitude or appreciation to someone in my life. Or maybe I wanna be a person that want, that, that's organized. So for you, maybe you're gonna, uh, you're gonna make your bed every single day. Maybe you say, hey, I wanna be a godly example for my kids. So for you, maybe you wanna do a U version reading plan with your kids. So that every day there's a spiritual touch point that you have together. Maybe you say, I want to be a person that wants to be focused. So maybe you take out your little note card every day. Maybe you write down three things. These are my three priorities. You do them every single day. You want to be a person that's healthier, so you walk three times a week for 20 minutes. Here's the point. Based upon who you want to become, what one habit do you need to put in place? What new system do you need that will take you to where God wants you to be? Now, some of you will say this. You'll say, I don't really do systems. Systems are just way too constraining for me. I like to live spontaneous. What, do you, what you need to understand is this. We all have systems. You either have systems that are in place intentionally or systems that have been put, put in place by default. But you have systems. We all do. Your system may be hit the snooze button four times, get up late, kick the dog, yell at the kids, drive like a crazy person on your way to work, putting on your makeup while you're in the car on the expressway. I gotta tell you, if I run into one more person on the expressway putting on makeup, I am going to lose it. You get to work, you have an attitude all day, come home, yell at the kids, go to bed, feel guilty. These are all systems. They're not good ones, but they're systems. What new habit based upon who God wants you to become do you need to create? Experts in this area, they've defined what they call a habit loop. Here's how it works. Everyone has triggers. These triggers are unique to you. You see something, you walk by the refrigerator, you get bored, you get angry, you get hungry, you get lonely. It's the end of the day, it's the beginning of the day. These are all triggers. Then you do an act as a result of the trigger. You eat that piece of chicken that you saw in the refrigerator. You eat that piece of cake. You pray with your kids. You sleep in a little bit later. You yell at somebody, you eat a second hamburger. Whatever it is, there's a corresponding action to the trigger, followed by a reward. The reward is from the dopamine, the sugar rush, the pleasure, the extra seven minutes of sleep that you get, and then it all goes back to the trigger. This is how habits are formed. There's a trigger, we see something, we feel something, we have an emotion, we go to the same type of action.
action linked to that trigger, we get a similar type of reward, and then the process repeats itself. Trigger, action, reward. Trigger, action, reward. And this cycle goes on and on and on. So how do we start a new habit? What we want is we want the trigger and the action to be two things. And if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. We want our trigger and our action to be made obvious and to be made easy. We wanna make it obvious and we wanna make it easy. First thing we wanna do is we wanna, we wanna make it obvious. If you wanna change what you do, then we're gonna change what we see. Make that trigger obvious. If you wanna take your meds every day, Maybe you're gonna put your meds out at night on the bathroom counter so that when you wake up in the morning, you see the, 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 the meds and oh, there's a trigger. I need to take my meds. If you wanna be someone who is reading every night before you go to bed, maybe you take that book, you put it on your pillow at the beginning of the day. At the end of the day, when you come home, right before you get into bed, oh, you see the book on your pillow, there's your trigger. If you want to write a note every day to encourage somebody, at the end of the day, put that note and the pen on your desk so that when you walk in the next day, oh, there's your trigger. This is what I'm supposed to do every day. Make it really obvious. Then we're going to make it really easy. And this is what's so much fun about this. You don't need to say, I'm going to read through the whole Bible this year. If you try that, you'll probably quit before you finish the book of Genesis. Instead, what you might want to do is simply say, this year, I'm going to read one verse every single day, every day. You want to get a streak going on the YouVersion app. Here's my promise to you. If you do that for 27 days, 27 days being the number of days it takes for you to establish a habit pathway in your brain. If you do that for 27 days, you might just get an appetite to read two verses. And then one day you're going to read a whole chapter. Start small and let it grow from there. You might say, well, I want to pray with my spouse, but we don't know how to pray together. It's just too awkward and too intimate. I mean, I know we can have sex together, but we can't really pray together. For a moment, I want you to think about just how ridiculous that sounds. Moving right along. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab your spouse's hand and you're going to thank God for one thing, just one thing every day. Thank, thank you, God, that, that we have AC in the house. And everybody said, amen. Or thank you, God, that we, don't kill, we didn't kill one of our kids today. Thank you for one thing every single day. You want to journal what you do. One sentence. Just start there. Here's where I saw God work today. One sentence. You might get carried away and you might write two sentences in one day. And then one day you might be as good as me and you might write five whole lines. I want to get in better shape. Okay, well, maybe you start out with 10 push-ups. Can't do 10 push-ups. Well, maybe you do five. Can't do five. Well, maybe you do one. Put your knees on the ground if you can't do one and try to do that one. If you can't do a push-up with your knees on the ground, well, you just need to quit. Working out just, it ain't for you. I'm just joking. Here's the point. Do something. Start small and see what happens. What are, you, what are you doing to build the systems that you need in your life? There's a trigger that tells me after this, this is what I do because this is a new habit in my life. Here's how you write it out in your notes. You'll say this, I will do blank after I do blank. There's your system. Daniel would say it like this. He would say, after I eat eggs, I pray. After I eat my ham sandwich for lunch, not sandwich, sandwich. That was a joke, by the way. After I eat my ham sandwich, I pray. After I eat my chicken dinner, I pray. I do this first, and then I do take this action. I have this trigger, then I take action. I will do blank after I do blank. Remember, successful people do consistently what other people only do occasionally. People who are close to God aren't there by accident. They have small disciplines that draw them close to God. People who are financially strong, they don't do it going shopping for whatever they want when they want. They're a discipline, there's a plan, there's a mindset, there's a habit. People who are in shape, it doesn't happen going to an all-you-can-eat buffet three times a day. 
It takes a plan. It takes exercise. It takes some small disciplines consistently done over time. We all have similar goals, but we have incredibly different results. As I mentioned last week, if you were here, we don't have goal problems. We have system problems. We've got habit problems. What set Daniel apart was his habits, his time with God three times a day. There's something I want to let you in on, something in my life that isn't quite good. Most would say I've had a little success in life, to which I would agree. But my biggest issue is that I'm rarely satisfied. I'm always wanting something else, something different, something more. And the reason why is because I've been living with the wrong kinds of goals. My goals have been primarily means goals. What's a means goal? A mean goal is a goal that leads to something else. It's a means to an end. How do you know if your life is full of means goals? On the other side of your goal, there's always a so. I want to get good grades so I can go to a good school, so I can get a degree, so I can get a good job, so I can get enough money, so I can take her out on a date, so I can get married, so we can have a great honeymoon, so we can have a nice life, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's always a so on the other side. My goals have always had a soul on the other side of them. The problem is this. Whenever there's a soul on the other side of it, then happiness, fulfillment, contentment, or joy are always deferred to the future. There's always something else out there. It's always in the future. And what I realized is that instead of setting means goals, what I want to do is I want to set end goals. The only end that I can find on the other side of every so is not a what, but it's always a who. It's not what I'm getting or where I'm going or what I'm doing, but who I'm becoming. And the only end goal that ever seems to matter is if I become more like Christ. Wow, what a great message. If this message was a blessing to you, make sure you come back next week and invite a few friends to tune in. You can even host a watch party. Either way, you don't want to miss part three of the series. If you're looking to take your next step at Expansion Church, there are a couple of ways for you to do, connect. One way to connect is through Expansion Group. Listen, family, you can still be socially connected while you're social distancing. Join us as we grouped up online every Monday at 7 p.m. Fill out a connect card, check the groups box, and someone from our team will get you plugged into one of our men's or women's groups. Or if you'd like to join our launch team, you can check the box that says join the launch team. If you'd like to connect with Pastor Rock and Shaterika to get more info about Expansion Church, check the appropriate box on the connect card and our team will set up a virtual meeting with them so they can answer any questions you might have. As we close, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, let's take this series in habits and apply it in our lives each and every day. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We love you and we look forward to seeing you again next week.